All right, to finish up our uh, discussion on public opinion polls, uh, we have to look at there are four pitfalls of public opinion, so four ways in which public opinion may not always provide us with the most accurate information. First and foremost, people may have conflicting viewpoints, conflicting opinions. They may want more public services, schools, roads, things of this nature. But when asked about it, they may be unwilling to see any sort of increase in taxes which may be used to provide these services. Second, opinions may be at odds with the reality of an issue. You look back to the war in Iraq in 2003. A number of people was when we invaded Iraq thought that Iraq had a deep connection to Al-Qaeda and that also the uh, suicide bombers of 9-11 were Iraqi. Both of those were untrue, yet people, some people interviewed thought that this was true. Third, people may be uninformed about a particular issue. If someone asks about a particular topic and no one has even thought about it or really has a good understanding of what's going on, they may still answer. Sometimes we refer to these as non-opinions, people just providing answers for the sake of providing answers rather than saying, I don't know. Finally, we may get skewed results in sensitive topics about social issues or race where rather than answer, answering a question or a polling question honestly, people will try to think, well, what does the pollster want me to hear? The final component today we want to look at is how public influ influences our government. Public opinion can be viewed as the collection of individual opinions, where all opinions deserve equal treatment, regardless of whether the individual expressed to them are knowledgeable on an issue or not. Thus, public opinion is considered to be an aggregation of preferences of people from all segments of society. The use of public opinion polls uh, to gauge what people are thinking underlies this view. By asking questions of a sample of people who are representatives of the U.S. population, pollsters contend that they can assess Americans' public mood. In a democracy, the opinions of the majority are the ones that should count the most and should guide government leaders' decision-making. The opinions of the minority are less important than those of the majority. This view of public opinion is consistent with the idea of popular, popular election, in that every citizen is entitled to opinion, in essence a vote, on a particular issue, policy, or leader. In the end, the position that is taken by most people, in other words, the position that receives the most vote, is the one that should be adopted by policymakers. Rarely, though, if ever, does the public hold a single unified opinion. There is often significant disagreement in the public's preferences, and clear majority opinions do not emerge. This situation poses a challenge for leaders looking to translate these preferences into policies. So I have this example here of the health care law about how divided it is between both Democrats and Republicans. So it becomes difficult then for a politician to say, well, what do we do with the Affordable Care Act? What do we do with Obamacare? Do we continue to tweak and do we continue to move it? Or do we just try to favor one side or the other? Some scholars contend that public opinion merges from public debate among groups rather than from individual opinions. Political parties, interest groups, trade associations, nonprofit organizations. Some scholars contend that public opinion emerges from public debate among groups rather than from individual opinions. These groups will articulate positions and front public discussion of issues in which they have a stake. Group rep groups representing opposing viewpoints often find themselves in a position to define social problems. While individuals often find it difficult to make their views known or have them taken seriously, organized groups have the resources, such as lobbyists and funding, to administer polls and pay for advertising, as well as the ability to attract the attention of policymakers and the mass media. Social media has also made it easier for groups without significant resources to publicize their opinions by using things like Facebook, Twitter, as well as other various platforms. Groups work hard to frame issue debates to their advantage. They often will gauge public preferences and use this information when devising media tactics to gain support of their op uh, positions. Opposing groups will present competing public opinion poll data in an effort to influence decision makers and the press. Just a reminder for what's going on next week, Monday is Halloween, uh, so make sure your Chapter 6 and 7 research questions are completed in Google Classroom and done.
Tuesday is a math schedule. We have a floppy quiz. Uh, the articles you had to read are the red versus blue political typology. In addition, uh, we will have 12 to 15 vocab terms. And you should have been reading, I don't know if you were, uh, the two floppy readings, one on engaging youth, combating apathy of young Americans towards politics, and also the one on the culture war, the myth of the, a polarized America. Uh, this quiz should be worth about 20 points. So let me know Monday if you have any questions. We'll talk to you on Monday. Have a great week. Go Shamrocks.